Hello, good evening. I am Dr. Thomas Matthew. I am working in uh, Edakuchi Urban Public Health Center in Anagulam. I am going to talk about a very important subject and I want all of you to hear and understand carefully about this uh, uh, outbreak of Nipah virus in uh, in Agulam. This uh, Nipah virus infection was detected in North Parvo area and that boy is admitted in a multi-specialty hospital in Nagulam and is isolated and is uh, very carefully being treated and uh, is protected. All those who are going to him is taking very cautious precautions and very protected barrier nursing is being instituted and uh, this uh, Nipah virus infection is very important because the mortality rate is very very high this uh, mortality rate uh, once the infection sets in mortality rate is between 50 to 80 percent so it is very very dangerous infection and it is caused by a virus infection as you know there is there are bacteria and virus and bacteria are uh, uh, bigger organisms unicellular organisms but virus is a very very speck small slender slender DNAs and RNAs only as small strips of DNAs and RNAs these are virus so bacteria is easy to treat bacterial infection antibiotics are there a lot of antibiotics are there for treating anti uh, bacterial infection but virus infection is very very difficult to treat because they change their their uh, their body shape, their uh, their uh, antigenicity, and so once we start an antibiotic, it may skip that antibiotic. So this Nipah virus infection is a virus, and. Uh, uh, this uh, in, in uh, the virus, this virus is a paramyxo virus. Very, very virulent virus. It causes respiratory infection and brain infection. So those who get Nipah infection will have fever, nasal discharge, cough, breathing difficulty. And when they get the brain infection, encephalitis, dizziness, fits, ataxia, that is cerebellar signs, unconsciousness, coma, all these things. So, we detect the infection by fever, cough, and uh, respiratory infection and brain infection symptoms. And uh, this, how this infection was started in the world in 1999, 
this, uh, this uh, infection was first detected in Malaysia in a big farm. What happened in this big farm? It's uh, just a big, big, big farm. And uh, in the, around that big, big farm, there was a lot of fruit trees. Mango trees, different trade types of apple trees and other varieties of fruits trees were there and uh, bats were uh, used to come to these trees and was biting these fruits and the fruits were falling down and also big rares uh, brought these fruits uh, from uh, these fruits uh, trees and they gave these fruits to the pigs and and through uh, by this way this uh, Nipah infection was transmitted to the pigs bats brought this Nipah virus and from the uh, fruits bitten by the brats, the fruits eaten by pigs, pigs got the infection. And when the pigs got the infection, the pigs sneeze and coughed and they also get brain infection. And uh, through the nasal discharge of the pigs, these this, uh, workers and laborers in the in the big uh, farm got the infection. Out of around uh, 225 uh, farm laborers, all all those all uh, those uh, to about 225. Uh, far, uh, farmers got the Nipah infection. Uh, around 110 uh, farmers died. So the mortality rate was this way was very high. Uh, from this uh, Malaysia, the next two after two years, it spread to Singapore. And uh, there also many people died, and then it uh, spread to uh, Beng uh, Bengal. Bengal, those who uh, was climbing the palm trees and drinking the the, the liquor at the top of the trees, the bats were coming and dropping their uh, waste in the uh, in the liquor, in the palm trees. The people were climbing up and uh, drinking this liquor. They got the snipa infection. And uh, again, a lot of casualties were there in uh, Bengal. And then uh, again after a few years, it happened in uh, Bangladesh in a lot of infections and casualties were reported of, uh, uh, about uh, Nipah infection. And then and, and, uh, a few years back, it came to Kerala also in Calicut. Out of 19 infections, 17 people died. In, uh, in Calicut. So why is this uh, so many, many infection, uh, so many casualties happen in uh, Calicut because this infection was very new to us. So we were not prepared to prepare to treat it and contain it in Calicut. But now in uh, May 30, 30th, 
This infection was detected in Paravur in Anagulam. The boy was taken to the multi-specialty hospital in Anagulam and he is barrier nursed and isolated. He is, uh, he is, uh, one, he is kept in one ward and about uh, 99 nurses are uh, our uh, contacts and uh, their uh, daily their uh, temperature is being recorded morning and evening and uh, we have to know what is uh, uh, contact and what is a suspect and what is a case a case of Nipah is the uh, uh, is a is a is a case is a person where we sent the blood samples, the body fluids to the to the lab in uh, Pune. That is a urine sample, blood sample, cerebrospinal fluid. That is brain fluid sample and sputum sample. Now, uh, last week, uh, this uh, Pune uh, laboratory has opened a branch in our uh, uh, Nagalam Cooperative Medical College. So now we can send the sample here also in our uh, cooperative medical college. So, and uh, a case, open case is where the the body fluid is positive for Nipah virus, and the uh, contact is a person who come within one meter of that patient and being in contact for 15 minutes or more. So that, pe that person should be uh, observed for fever, respiratory infection and brain infection for 21 days. And uh, that, uh, that is a contact. And a suspect is a person who is having a cough, breathing difficulty and nasal discharge and uh, any other uh, cerebrospine, uh, any other uh, uh, brain infection signs like dizziness, fits, or uh, cerebral signs like difficulty in walking, and uh, uh, tremor. So, uh, contact should be observed for 21 days for any development of Nipah virus infection and suspect also should be isolated that means and uh, for 25, 21 days and uh, he should be uh, his uh, four body fluids like urine, blood, sputum and CSF, uh, cerebrospinal fluid should be sent to the lab and tested for uh, Nipah virus infection. You should be very careful because this Nipah virus infection is very, very, very dangerous. If it is, if it is just positive with this Nipah virus, the mortality, the, the dying rate, the mortality rate is 50 to 80 percent. Not many diseases have got this much, this much uh, 
virulence and uh, and uh, mortality rate what we should do is uh, we should uh, keep the we have, to, we have to uh, be very hygienic in contacting with the uh, patients that we have to wash the hands when uh, when uh, after uh, after before and after uh, examining a patient with soap and water and uh, should not go very near to that uh, not Uh, with, uh, uh, we should keep a uh, distance of uh, about one meter with the patients. And we should wear mask, and uh, we should uh, use bleaching powder for uh, disinfection. Only bleaching powder is uh, uh, useful in Nipah virus. We should uh, produce. We we should uh, make. Nipa virus, uh, this bleaching powder disinfectant by making, by give one liter of water, you have to add 30 grams of bleaching water powder. This one one liter of water, you have to add 30 grams of bleaching powder and mix and make this disinfectant. No other disinfectant is effective in uh, Nipa virus infection. So. These field workers all are now uh, alerted and they should uh, go to houses to the, those who are having a fever, uh, respiratory infection or brain infection. This our uh, JPHS should go to the, uh, the houses where these suspects are there, fever patients are there. Asha workers also has to go to this uh, cases twice, double the number, and be very vigilant. And this uh, health, health department has taken very, very important, very, very, very seriously this uh, Nipah virus infection. And uh, the government is very, very serious about this uh, Nipah virus infection. Our health minister is uh, is personally giving all the attention to eradicate and uh, encourage this uh, activity in, among the doctors and the health department. So, health health uh, health minister as well as the health secretary is very very interested in uh, Anagulam now and they are watching the activities of the health wo- health workers in Ernaulam. We should take our, our all our our energy to prevent this uh, uh, Nipah virus infection and we should uh, win the war against this Nipah virus infection. This incubation period for Nipah virus is 4 days to 21 days. So, if we are contacting a patient with a Nipah infection, a person will develop Nipah virus infection within 4 days to 21 days. That is why we are uh, isolating or quarantining this uh, uh, contacts for 21 days. Personal hygiene is very, very important. Rehydration, very important. And uh, notification of uh, fewer cases, very, very important. So, we should, uh, I hope in our Edakuchi area, we are all very, very vigilant now. And I am sending this uh, uh, 
message to all my contacts in Edakuchi area as well as all my friends and relatives. If they have got any doubt or any 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 doubt or any uh, questions about uh, Nipah virus infection or uh, any doubt regarding fever and uh, or uh, anything, you, you can contact me and by phone and. Uh, and uh, again i will tell one more one more time i will uh, say what are the symptoms of uh, nipah virus infection nipah virus infection this uh, symptoms is fever nasal discharging cough difficulty in breathing we have to remember that difficulty in me breathing is uh, present in H1 SN, H1, H1N1 infection also breathing difficulty is there. So we have to think, we have to keep in mind about H1N1 infection also. And in this HIPAA virus infection, brain is involved, so brain fever in the form of dizziness, but I go. epilepsy, convulsions, ataxia, difficulty in walking, but I do everything. So, please be in contact. Those who are working with me in Adapuchi, Adapuchi uh, uh, Urban uh, Public uh, Health Center in my PhD, UPHC, please be, please contact me if you want to know more about this Nipah virus infection. And we have to keep a, an area in the, in the hospital, an area for cough area, coughing area, we have to keep a part of the area and we have to segregate the waste, the effective and efficient waste, hospital wastage area also be very important. We are doing it now, we are also, for a long time we have been doing it, but we have to be very careful, more careful about it. In, uh, segregating the the hospital base correctly thank you